because we have this process that follows the thumbnailing stage, iteration stage, and there is something actually that I was found quite funny, is that uh, in the class description, there is a week that is called sketching to final. And then we have the last week that is called finalizing, right? Got it. And then uh, I was wondering if uh, we are going to redraw the characters again in a more dynamic pose, like make like a poster out of it. Because my thumbnails, the pose are a little bit stiff, I think, because I was just thinking about the general idea. And I don't, totally. and I don't know how counterproductive would it be to draw them again, you know? And then I'm yeah, ready to <coughs> we are going to follow those steps in the following weeks. So how, how does that go about it? Now, those are more general. It all depends on where people are at, depending on how I approach it, whether you should do more of this or more of this. Mm -hmm. um, so with you, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, it's up to you. If you want to like just redraw them in a, in a better pose or whatever, because you just feel like you'd like that, then the time is now to do that. You should do it now, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. um, but if you... If you don't care, or it's just you were just curious what my answer would be, um, yeah, those poses are perfectly fine for concept art. Right? Like, you don't have to have dynamic poses uh, for concept art. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's actually preferred not to. Like, maybe in the beginning, like in your thumbnails, if you had them posing, that actually helps. Maybe, like, to kind of sell their concept, but the final concept art usually isn't dynamic yeah yeah um so with that being said uh yeah you can do whatever you want and so like when it says sketch to final that's usually just more of what you're doing and then the finalization of it is what you're going to be doing on like the final weeks so whatever you do right now will get us a good estimation of what you should be doing for the remainder of the class. Because if you do a really good job, then we don't necessarily have to finalize. We can move on to something else. But if you do, okay, if you, if you kind of like do a, a good job, but there's some, still there's some gaps, then we would take that extra time to really work on it. But like some people will be ahead, you know, it's doesn't like, those are just there just so you kind of have an idea of what's the, what to expect. Because the way that I teach my class, I don't teach based off of a, a curriculum. Yeah, right? it's kind of direct, uh, directing everyone depending on their needs, right? Yeah, their skill level, their needs. Uh, because people learn better that way and, and they do better, right? Because if I, if I felt like you were, you need more time to practice something, then I tell you to practice that. Uh, mm -hmm. and with no fear of like, oh, you didn't, oh, you're not keeping up with the pace of the class. Like what a loser. Like I don't, I don't make anyone feel, <laughs> yeah, I don't make anyone feel like they're not doing a good job. Um, only make them feel like they're not doing a good job if they actually aren't doing a good job, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's other ways that could happen, but definitely one of the ways, um, that it's not is just like not being like an amazing artist, right? Like it's okay to like have bad artwork. That's yeah. kind of the point of the class is to make mistakes here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's more of like a loose suggestion is kind of what those are, right? Because I don't want people to also just kind of uh, come into class having like reading descriptions, like, like follow your dreams, chase your, <laughs> trace your ambitions <laughs> and i'm here for you it's more of like that's easier to kind of like uh demonstrate in a class and with me looking over your work giving you the advice while you're here hearing me tell you to you than just kind of some sort of like oh, a mission statement uh, i think it works better if you just say oh yeah these are the types of things that i uh, I'm going to cover in the class so people kind of like have a proof of purchase um, 
but whenever people ask like outside of that, like there are people that send emails or just like, Hey, you know, I'm curious of taking a class. I have more questions. And then I usually answer those questions uh, in a way that helps them understand what they're going to get out of the class truthfully. Um, and most people are, uh, immediately are like, yeah, that's, that's totally what I want. Sure thing. Yeah. Never. I don't think I've ever had anybody that's like, that's not at all what I wanted. Um, I think most people are, when they take my class are looking for some sort of guidance more so than just being a good concept artist. Like that's part of it, yeah. of course. It's all connected. But, yeah. Um, and I think that's what I deliver uh, more than anything else. So. All right. Yeah, but like, yeah, don't don't get too caught up on that stuff. Just just listen to what I tell you <laughs> to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing that. It has been like really, really good for me. I I, I felt like huge improvement already. And thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, just just trust my insight. And uh, you'll you'll be all right. All right. Any other questions? Oh yeah, uh, I was actually wondering. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> I had a feeling this guy, Sanchez. Sorry, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Um, like what are some what are some like uh tasks that I guess you get assigned that uh like as a concept artist that people that are not in the industry don't really think about or don't really like know about like oh, okay but, yeah yeah, you know it's i mean it's not I don't think there's anything surprising mm -hmm. like let me ask you, what do you think? Uh, well, I mean, it, uh, I would guess that the, uh, I guess, whole job is, oh, hey, we need uh, this thing designed, and then you do that thing, uh, and then the yeah. only thing that, that varies is, like, the, the thing that you're designing, I guess. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, there, so I, I'm going to give you a more satisfying answer, though, but, like, <laughs> but I, like, a lot of times when people ask uh, this type of question, um, you know, they, they it's, uh, it's, it's obvious. It's like, it's a precautional, precautionary question, right? Like just trying to make sure that you're prepared, but you can mm -hmm. never really be prepared for most things. Um, so that's why I think it's best that I teach what I teach, which is mm -hmm. generally good habits yeah because these will adapt when things start to get hit the fan yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so <clears throat> so what is the the more satisfactory answer well the the answer generally is that um yeah most people know they have a clue of what's going to be and you just you just demonstrated this okay and so what I would say is the kind of thing that, um, that you should, you should try to get better at that isn't like, so what I'm trying to get at is like what you would expect from work. You, you figured it out, right? Like you've made a really good guess and that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. The part that I think that most people don't expect is how like much nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about <laughs> right like you think like when you work at blizzard that the people at blizzard know what they're doing mm -hmm. like everybody has like some sense of foresight but there's, there's a there's a lot of people that just don't they just don't know what they're talking about yeah and and i'm not saying that i know what i'm talking about i'm just saying like I can tell when somebody else doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, like, I, I always like, uh, I make this claim about our president. One of my main, um, my main complaints about this dude is that he's clearly incompetent. Like he just doesn't know 
what he's doing. And, and people are like, well, he's done this for the government and he's done that. And this is great. And this is great. And I'm like, no, you could have done that with any other person. He's actually not doing any of that. He's just kind of just talking shit all the time. Like there was one time he was on Twitter for literally like a whole day. Like he was posted, he posted like 80 tweets in a day. And I, I think I did the math, forget the math on that. It was like four or five tweets an hour, <laughs> right? Like nobody that's tweeting that often is doing anything, right? Yeah. And I'm like, that's clear incompetence. Like if, I, if he was working at McDonald's <laughs> and I, I checked his Twitter and this guy's like tweeting that, I was like, dude, what are you doing? You know, check in on them. Right? Yeah. And that's like a low tier job. And I would be like, this guy's fired, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, let alone like running a whole country and having the codes to freaking nukes. <laughs> so it's like, like for whatever reason, people have this hard concept to think that like, no, that's not possible. That's not possible. How could he run all these businesses? And how could he have done this? And how could he be done? And I'm like, I've worked for people who have this type of competency problem yeah. and in high in high positions so i'm i'm very i'm very uh convinced and uh at least based off of personal experience too like that this is definitely the case <laughs> okay yeah um and so this is the thing that you i think most people don't expect that specifically yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. right like like you you'd go in and they're like hey you know make this change and mm -hmm. you're like all right and so you go to change it and then they come and they're like there's something wrong about it. Like, I don't know what yeah. it is. And, and you're like, oh, cool. Like, what do you think it is? And you're just like, oh, uh -huh. I don't know. And, and they don't give you meaningful criticism either. Yeah, yeah. Like, they'll be like, yeah, make it more epic. Uh -huh. And you're just like, what does that mean? And um, they don't even know what that means. Uh -huh. And so this, is, this, this does happen. And like, you know, you're, you're taking my class and you're thinking, well, this is great. You know, I'm getting really good feedback. I'm very, like, I'm getting very uh, hands-on solutions to some of these problems that I'm running into. Yeah. Like, when you work, that's not what happened. Mm. You are supposed to be the art expert. You're supposed yeah. to figure out, when they say make it more epic, you're the one that's supposed to figure out what that's supposed to mean. Yeah. Not them. That's why they hired you. Yeah. So, like, so all of this kind of, like, you know, like, this kind of approach of teaching that I do is a lot of, like, self-accountability like making sure that you can find these solutions on your own as well as obviously giving you some giving you a hand here and there yeah but really it's important that you know how to like solve these problems right yeah because when you get to job that's ultimately what you're going to be doing half the time right yeah <clears throat> i mean i'm sure yeah. like you know uh, long and uh, uh Alyssa can both contest to this because they're both working pros um i'm not sure if uh kyle you are you definitely look like you might be i'm not sure if you're working in the industry but i'm sure you've worked for some clients maybe some of you yeah have. i've worked before yeah so you may you you some of you guys can can sympathize with what i'm talking about right yeah, like that's so true man yeah so this is something that people don't expect and so uh my advice generally for this is to be really good at helping them give you advice yeah and that's why you should do lots of drawings that's why you should do lots of variations iterations mm -hmm. this provides more opportunity for them to kind of articulate what they want and what they don't want yeah uh if it's still a little problem then you have to just be straight up and be like can you guys provide some reference of like what you meant by make it more epic like mm -hmm. give me a great example of something that you think is epic you know yeah 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 that, that um all that reminds me of uh of this uh D, D art documentary where uh like the artists got brought into like one of the meetings or whatever and they're like yeah this is like a, a really big deal like that this is that you gotta like uh use all the colors <laughs> like just like every color you got just like use all of them because this is like really like a like a really important like promotion uh so it's like that sort of like complete disconnection from like the like business side wait what happened you used all the colors and what did the artists do did they use oh, all the colors oh, no no they, they were just like nah dude that's not that's not how this works man <laughs> <laughs> and, and another, awesome. another another one was like 
Uh, <laughs> Use all the colors. This is a yeah. big deal. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another one was like, a, it was the same thing. Like, it was like, oh, oh man, this is like a super important, like, promotional, like, art piece this is gonna be like the cover of the, the new edition or whatever so like use yeah. your most expensive colors and it's just like what dude <laughs> you know there there was a there was a time where that was true i will say the whole use all the colors and use the expensive colors it's just um not true anymore <laughs> sure. but like like there was a time like it's my least favorite era of art there's like these different <laughs> eras of art yeah and uh the one that i'm talking about or thinking of i forget the name of it but it's when like they like had like a huge revolution of like color um access because mm-hmm. it was a thing like it was hard to like have multiple colors this is definitely a thing yeah um and so what ended up happening is like like this new technology came out and now people had all of the colors mm-hmm. and then and then all these paintings during that era was like all of the colors and it was like i said it's super gross i hate it <laughs> all their work in that era is just super saturated it's too saturated it's like how i feel about like disco I mean, like electronic music when it first came out like just people like oh we can make everything digitized but it's like the first version of it and then it just became like a mess. Yeah. So I didn't last. <laughs> you know? Like, uh, same problem with like digital artwork. Like the second that that got popular, it's like people are just like, oh man, like I've, I've got so many tools. Like I got, I got so much yeah. power. Yeah, it's yeah. like, no, nah, man, you gotta, you gotta roll it back. Yeah, the classics still do well. Like classical painting styles still do really well. Um, uh, like, classical ideas still do really well so same yeah. with music you know like um like rap's not going to go anywhere rap is good rap's a really good type of music uh r&b is never going to go anywhere or like kind of like love ballads right mm. like these these types of music genres are never going to go anywhere um because it's just good stuff yeah uh but like disco yeah definitely gone I think uh, Bruno Mars was trying to bring it back, but didn't last long. Uh, I like it. I like I like Bruno Mars stuff, but I was like, it's not gonna last though. Um, yeah. So that's that's my answer to that question. It's really uh, like the first part of it. I couldn't really like. It's it is what you would expect in terms of tasks. And it will vary, like studio to studio will handle these tasks differently. But then it goes back to my first premise of like, a lot of people don't know what they're fucking doing. And yeah. so it's less about the task, but more of like how they're handling the task mm-hmm. is where it becomes different. Like some, st- like, let me give you a great example of, of a terrible example. So I was working on a project for Disney and they were like, hey, you know, like, can you make this like creepy monster? And I was like, that's what I do. And so I made this creepy monster for them. And they're like, you know, it's cool, but it's like not creepy enough. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, man. I'll make it more creepy. So I try to make it more creepy. And then they're just like, yeah, still, it feels kind of like not creepy enough. Can you make it more creepy? <laughs> and I was like, sure. Okay. And then so I just kept doing this and went back and forth until I ultimately was like, okay, guys, like, clearly what i'm what you're asking me to do is just not working out like elaborate what you mean to me by like more creepy Mm -hmm. you know and um and he was just like uh you know like yeah it's just creepy and i was like okay can you just like find me an image and show me what you think creepy is And then I'll go from that. And they're like, oh yeah, that's probably a better idea. Let's do that. So then they sent me this this image. And it was just like an old man. Mm -hmm. Like sitting on like a bench. And I was like, oh. Because like the creepy that I was doing was more like Pan's Labyrinth type creepy, you know? Like more of like this kind of distorted Lovecraftian anatomy-esque feeling, you know? Um, That kind of creepy, more like existential type terror type stuff. Yeah. Um, 
because that creeps people out too but in just different ways you know yeah not like i think that person's gonna try to rape my child type creepy like this person's like always shows up at birthday parties and just is like looking at the children weird you know like that kind of creepy or like the kind of guy like on the bus that's just like staring at you kind of creepy like they don't necessarily look weird they're just acting weird it's not like less like looking creepy more like acting creepy yeah and when that was when we established this then i just drew like an old pedophile looking dude (laughs) instead and then they're like perfect (laughs) great and so so this is going back and this is this is disney right like you think they even know what they're doing and so uh a good a good example of this on a large scale is like the star wars franchise the Game of Thrones franchise, like the last season, Lost, mm. right? Mm. These are great examples of like incompetency uh, manifested, but in, ten, in, in a large ass scale. Um, yeah. So it's not like, you know, execs are like, how do we not make money? Mm-hmm. They want to make money. And they just, sometimes the execs get into the room, they make bad decisions, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's what happens. It's usually a, a factor of incompetency that makes us happen so then uh here's a good example of like flawless victory type of competency uh i was working for insomniac games on the edge of tomorrow or sorry edge of nowhere edge of tomorrow is that uh, movie with emily blunt and tom cruise <laughs> not that um edge of tomorrow or edge of nowhere is the the horror game on the vr mm-hmm. so i was uh slotted to design a lot of the creatures and stuff and so the tasks were pretty simple. They're like, all right, you know, like draw this creature based off of this description. And I was like, all right, got it. And then I would do it. And they're like, cool. All right, now let's move on to the next one. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, just render it out and then just send it over and then let's move on to the next one. And I was like, really? Oh, yeah, we're good here. This is exactly <laughs> what we wanted. You know, I was like, yeah, you don't want to do like some more explorations, whatever. They're like, no, like the ones you did were good. They're very helpful. Um, let's just now um move on to the next ones you know <laughs> and i was like okay cool and then uh we did and it just kept them going like that i think maybe like there's like one time where it was a little little on the fence like i was just not hitting the mark but like it was i felt guided like i felt i was being helped yeah get there and then i just did it and then there you go that's good let's move on to the next one you know and i just did that for like eight characters or something like this over the span of like three or four months. And uh, almost all those characters went into the game as I concepted them. Nice. Yeah. And uh, the game did really well and it was cl- critically acclaimed for one of the better VR games. But the the lesson I learned from that um, was that, um, that like when people have like very clear visions, like they make they make very clear decisions. Yeah. Um, like when I worked on Love, Death, and Robots, the same thing happened. They're like, "Hey, you know, we want you to work on this. Uh, we want you to work on this creature design for this like short film we're doing." I didn't even know it was for Love, Death, and Robots. They were just like, "It's this creature design," and I was like, "Cool, yeah, let's do it." And so then we did it, <laughs> and it was cool. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like a week's worth of work. I was just like, "This is what we want you to do," and I did it, and they loved it, and it was done. You know? Yeah. And it's like they hired me because they went to my website, they saw what I was able to do, and that's what they wanted. So that's what they got. Cool. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I feel like it's a the the big issue is understanding what different team members like what their skill set is and like understanding like what like, yeah how to communicate with them and all that so like we have to communicate and, and work with like 3d people um so like what's some of uh, some stuff that i guess like is essential for a 2d character artist to, to learn uh, yeah so that's the same 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 situation you have like it's like the same kind of answer to this that, that i gave um and i can give you examples to help you understand like some modelers can like take this concept that I've got here and make it. Uh, other modelers can't. They need orthographics. 
they need line art they need you to like to render everything perfectly you know yeah so when i encourage my students to have a high polish in their work this is so that they have range mm -hmm. because if you're working for a, a company and you cannot like you don't polish your work like you don't know how mm -hmm. right then you you're limited obviously right uh you can only work for other companies that uh that are okay with that yeah you don't know how to paint you know and there are companies like that and they're fine you know yeah. like uh, uh my buddy uh works at epic and he just draws he just does really good line art mm. and he, there's no need for him but that's the only kinds of companies you can work for companies that are accepting like that and obviously working for epic is a huge win mm -hmm. you know because of like Fortnite and stuff and so so it's not a bad deal that he got but like i know he was always struggling to get work because he just couldn't do that that part even though he's in my opinion one of the best designers in the industry mm. you know yeah yeah so like uh so it's essential to it will is it essential to, to show that uh like range of like a uh, rendering and ability like in your portfolio like yeah okay i, I can so. do yeah i can do orthographics like i can do like yes. this like massive render style and i can do like this and that yes yeah yes sir cool yeah but like in terms of like tasks and stuff like it's it's you really aren't going to be surprised <laughs> they're just gonna cool. be like yeah paint this robot yeah like, oh yeah got it <laughs> and then that's what you gotta do uh the w the time like the win could be something that throws you off mm -hmm. um some companies want that shit yesterday yeah some companies wanted it whatever dude just whenever you can get to it <laughs> you know sure. uh which is crazy uh, and some companies have reasonable deadlines, like a week or two to give like some versions. But like, it's usually like, hey, do this and then we'll see it tomorrow or whenever we can. And then you just yeah. show it to them. Cool. I'm just assuring you that it's nothing, there's nothing you're gonna be surprised by other than the incompetency aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, just last like clarifying question, super small one. Um, like a, a, I see like a bunch of like uh, people on YouTube uh, that say that the I guess character does or just like concept art industry in general it's like oh like you're you're gonna just end up doing like a bunch of like rocks or like painting textures or whatever sure. uh, but I mean I feel like that's just because those people lacked the skills to do things like beyond that oh, or like dang like, hot take. Or like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> is, is it because of that, or is it hot like, take, dude? Got him. <laughs> yeah, of course it's because of that. Yeah. Not everybody on YouTube is a skilled artist. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't like, take uh, it doesn't take a lot of skill to explain to people how to do things. Um, and I'm not saying that it's very little either. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, like. Any one of you guys can start making a YouTube video series talking about art as you're learning art. Yeah. And it will have a lot of value for a lot of different people. But that same skill is not going to get you the kind of work mm -hmm. that people like me who don't necessarily every day spend time like teaching people how to like just do basic stuff. Like I'm like, I'm working and then I do tutorials every full moon. Yeah, you know, and those tutorials are very, very meaningful because they're coming from the perspective of like a working professional. Yeah. Um, my my job isn't uh, primarily teaching. You know, uh, yeah. I like I would like it to be though, and so uh, I've made strides to do that. You know, in the last several years, like the last few years, and so. But my point is, is like you're not wrong, uh, and I'm not trying to bash these artists either. Uh, I want to. I want you to, like, um, be clear about this as well, because I I know you you're suspecting this is true, and I'm trying to confirm that it is, but like, uh, a lot of these people, um, like I have like well, let me use a good example of somebody that I respect quite a lot, right? But like this is absolutely true, and they've even I think they even talked about this mm -hmm. publicly. Uh, my buddy Cynix. Mm -hmm. he worked professionally for like a month and he said it was just was too much for him it was, he couldn't handle it mm. right but he's like one of the more popular youtubers who teach people how to get better at art yeah you know um and he likes it he likes teaching 
Uh, he teaches at La Laguna. He teaches at Brainstorm. He teaches online. Yeah. You know, he's really engaged with the community. He's a really nice guy. Uh, there's value in this, you know? Yeah. Because uh, I think uh, a good example of an, a, 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 an artist educator of like a teacher of mine that I think is no, by no means a good concept artist, but taught me so much was like Charles Hugh, hmm. you know, my life drawing instructor, um, like Marshall, Marshall Vandruff. I've known him when I first started out, like he's a great resource. That's why I'm very happy to see that he's getting a lot more acclaim through Pro, uh, Proco. Yeah. Um, but he's been around since I was like just starting out. Like I went to his workshops and I was like, this guy is so good at teaching. Um, so make no mistake uh, that this is, this is, there's value, but, but also I always say take every piece of advice from everybody with some sense of skepticism. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. And the way that you can kind of weed out the, the, like the way you can find the, the real information to your real questions, right. Mm -hmm. Is to just, ask keep asking questions like you're doing and keep yeah. listening to all sorts of different voices yeah right because then the the real answer will surface okay so if you hear from a professional like me that of course you're going to probably start off like doing <laughs> like textures and stuff like this and small props that mm. makes sense i did that I drew my fair share of boxes. Mm -hmm. But to say that like, that's all you'll ever do. That's kind of naive. Yeah. Cause, cause clearly there's concept artists that don't just paint boxes and fucking texture. it. So mm -hmm. the question isn't about how, when you first start, how you're just going to have to climb some sort of like, you know, corporate sense feeling ladder, which is mm -hmm. definitely a thing. Right? I agree with this premise that you don't start off guns blazing mm -hmm. with this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But to just to kind of like just make like a large general statement, I'm always skeptical of this. Mm -hmm. Especially when there's evidence, clear evidence that that's just not true for some people. Yeah. So then the next question is like, then how are the people that are not painting boxes, not painting boxes anymore, <laughs> right? Or doing mm -hmm. dirt. And the answer to that, I can tell you, is just, and you've already kind of answered it yourself, is people just aren't good enough. Mm. And people that are, aren't painting boxes anymore. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because like dudes like Piotr Jablonski or whatever, it's like, you know. Yes. They're not going to ask that guy to just like do random That would be a waste. Like, oh, yeah, know that you're an illustrator. Like, you know, we know that you can paint, so we're going to trust people you. People hire him for that. Yeah. Like, he's really good at it. He he's even like one of a kind, you know, yeah. like there's not too many people who could paint like that. And anyone mm. that does, it's like a clear, obvious, like copier, copier. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and he copied Sergi uh, Pelane basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Call us up. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he copied his style, but he just kind of like perfected it mm. in a different way. And so you can even see like Pelane, he like changed his whole style. He's like an yeah. inventor, man. Um, but not everybody's as attached to that because it's not cool realism, mm. you know? Yeah. But then uh, uh, um, getting to the ultimate point, right? Like those people just probably haven't worked or aren't not capable, you know? Yeah. Being a good teacher and up being a professional in the industry or independent from one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so there's nothing wrong with accepting that you're a good teacher, but maybe not a working professional. Like, and I don't think that that takes away merit from what they're teaching you. Cause yeah. I can learn from people who aren't professionals. Always, always. I was learning when I was learning game development, I was listening to a bunch of people who've never made a game mm -hmm. like and sold it. They made like lots of tutorials on how to make games, but they've never actually made a game yeah. and put it out there. And, um, and there's very few people that are doing that. 
that specific thing where they make a game and then teach people how to do it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the channels that I've heard this stuff from, like, they, I don't think they were like specifically like teaching channels or anything. It was just like random stuff that like friends would put up. Uh, on yeah. The, so that's even like, more suspect. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would, I would just try to avoid that stuff. Um, like I would listen to, like when I was like listening to movie reviews, like on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff, I stopped because I really don't think these people's opinions, even collectively, mm-hmm. <laughs> like align with mine at all. Yeah. I think there's just like a, there's a lot of pretension there. And so I'm just kind of like, right, I'm just going to find some other sources. Yeah. And uh, I just ultimately realized I just got to just watch movies. Like I'll just go watch the movie. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, yeah, I don't. Exactly, man. <laughs> like, and so, uh, and I started listening to like artists round table type thing, like actor round tables. Mm. Like those are really good. Uh, director round tables because these are like the professionals talking yeah. to each other and there's like a lot of more interesting conversations happening between that mm. and like somebody who's never made a movie never acted in a movie talking yeah. about why a movie is good or not uh-huh. and it's like I, i've come to realize like maybe these people don't actually know what makes a good movie um where some of these directors do because especially the ones that make good movies that do really well you know <laughs> i want to hear their opinions of other people's movies like, I'm curious. Like, when Scorsese had his opinion about the Marvel movies, I disagreed with it strongly, right? Yeah. But, like, I respected it. Like, it, it didn't feel... I didn't feel like he was trolling. Does mm. that make sense? Like, I felt like he had a very strong opinion and was being critical. I just disagreed with it. And um, I didn't entirely disregard what he said. I just didn't agree. Where, like, if I heard somebody, like, online say that, just some average Joe, I'm just like, all right, whatever, man. <laughs> you yeah. know? And so, uh, but again, it's not like I don't listen to average Joes either. Like, I listen to whatever. But, like, ultimately, um, I like to try to allocate my information and try to get, like, large-scale data. Mm. So that way I have a better, stronger opinion about things. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to let other people uh, yeah, ask questions. You, <laughs> All right. Those are good ones, though. I think people got some value out of that one, for sure. So don't worry about it too much. Cool. Yeah, usually I try to stop tangents or rants when they have nothing to do with art. That was clearly all art-related, so we're good. Any other questions? Cool. I'm sure there's something. I have a guess who's going to ask a question next. I'm going to hide it in my drawing. You guys won't even know. Any other questions? Huh? Maybe. Hold on, I need to close. I got a question. Oh, I did not guess you. But go ahead. <laughs> um, I'd like to to know how you handle like the more subtle forms on your organic like monster stuff like the tumor monster or the or any i don't know like sometimes you paint like more monstrous type things and then you have like your overall form but then you do like these wrinkles and stuff that look really tight but they're they're also really hard to like i i look at them and they're hard to break down as as easy as much as the overall form i guess like, what are you thinking about when you're doing that? I mean, did you study anything specific or did you just kind yeah. of find a flow? Always studied, my man. You should know better I, than that. I know you always studied, but I was... <laughs> How help, dare help you? a brother out. Help a brother out. Right. How dare you? Well, I was more commenting on the did I study part. Of course. Yeah, yeah, was, How dare you? I'm trying to give you some content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you some questions. Um, so the, the, how I studied the subtle forms, well, that's my wife. 
do need to answer this. Give me a second. All right, back. Um, yeah, this it's thirty percent rule is what I discovered, and that's it. All right, thanks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, the thirty percent rule. What is the thirty percent rule? So I studied a lot, as many of you might have guessed. And what I discovered when it came to painting subtle forms is that like, so you have like this kind of, uh, you have this kind of monster form, whatever. And you just start to bring in like the lighting, however you feel like it belongs. Let's just get in there. So these are all my, uh, macro details, large scale stuff. Okay. Yeah. So once you get this stuff into place, it's like soften the edges and some of this. Okay, let's add. More deets, okay, or more structure, I mean. All right, cool. So, 30% rule. Let's look at the HSB sliders, shall we? So let's say I wanna add some detail up in this head here, right here, in this area, it's a little empty. So look at where it's at, it's at 80%. So I, I can go either 15% this way or 50% this way. Okay. Which adds up to 30%. Yeah? Yeah, like a 15% give or take. Yeah, and so then let's say I, I mess with this and I go over here, mess with this. Actually, we can go a little bit further, like 68 maybe. Now, this is me deliberately doing this, but that's how you do it. Because, because within that local value, that range, that's how we can get away with adding details without it being so um, in your face. Uh, now, I just, I just do it by hand. I don't necessarily like... Yeah, yeah. Do it like, but like, that's what's happening. So like, if you go here, you'll see that it stays within the range if you're looking at the slider. Okay. <clears throat> so then when I'm in the darker area, like this more shadowed area, all right, let's make it real dark and different. Cool, because that was going to be my next question. Is that darker it's, area? It's the same thing. Why would it be different? Right? <clears throat> well, so the principled idea is that you don't want to you don't want to add like really harsh contrasted value changes because it's going to make it look it's not going to look subtle it's going to look abrasive.
you know, but if it's subtle, right, within that 15% range, you know, it's going to look okay. Because like the, the large scale value changes are, are, are not happening here. So if we look through here, you'll see that it's within the 30% range. Yeah. 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 And then uh, obviously there's opportunities where you can like totally like pop some of this forms even darker, but that's what you're implying here then is that like there's like a huge deep cut into that form. And then that's been, then it's the less is more idea, right? Yeah. And then 30% still exists even here, right? Even at the smaller scale, you know, but like this light value is clearly like a light of value in this value range, you know, this light value, you know, this value right here. But then when I put this same value in the, in the light, right, light range is completely super dark. So it's important to kind of like always stay within those ranges, you know? Sure, no? Yeah, this is very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I got, dude. It's helpful tips. But you I know. have a small question. What the? I don't, I don't know how small it is. All right. If it's more uh, than four words, you're a liar. Damn. Oh, that's one word already. Okay, I'm over. <laughs> no. Um, I, I was just curious because you said um, you took live classes and that's how you started. Is that right? I took what? Like live classes, live drawing classes. Oh, no. I just, that was one of the many things that I did. Uh, okay. It I wasn't just life drawing. Because mm. I do keep getting that advice of getting life classes and start drawing, um, you know, from reality, which I believe is, is true in getting yourself more familiar with gestures. But I was just wondering, because there are no classes here in, within my area, um, how far you can get, like, just digitally without, without them. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Probably the same. Like, if if you keep looking at them, maybe there is a subtle difference. I really don't know. Yeah. So, um, the quick answer to your question is, it doesn't really matter. It's just okay. all practice. You know, the masters could only study <laughs> by looking at life. Mm -hmm. And then people today, there's some people that have never gone life drawing, but are really good at anatomy. Um, not too many, but I, I can imagine that happening. It's not that crazy to think. Yeah. <clears throat> the reason why I, I asked you, mm -hmm. um, because that, uh, again, I feel like that type of question needs to be filtered a bit. Okay. Okay. And so it's more of a critique of the question. Hold on. Oh my gosh, my wife keeps calling me. Give me one second. I'm back. Got to wrap up now for sure. But um, okay. Yeah. So, so the the question, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, oh, should I do life drawing? And and then there's none near me. Am I missing out? Like this type of premise, you know? Yeah. Um. So you just need to change the the philosophy of why that question even popped up in your head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not that it's a bad question. It's just that uh, as someone who's done this and been here and taught many people and seen many great artists grow, you know, yeah. um, whether I was there or not, I've seen excellence in all shapes and sizes. Oh my gosh, this time it's my alarm. <laughs> Everything's going off. Nothing's giving me a break. 
the the problem with the premise is th- is that um, you're you're thinking you're focused on this idea of like like it's okay like so basically what I'm trying to get at is like it's it's naive okay mm. and and I'm not necessarily saying that as an insult that's just I'm saying no, that no, more like worry. a matter yeah, of fact. Just- exactly just say it as it is it's fine. yeah well i only say that as like i'll have to like disclaimer right because some people get you know they get affected yeah i know i know i know no i'm not if like you call that. somebody ignorant it's like the same They're effect. Like, yeah it's in, if you're using it for its actual literal term sometimes people get uh, they don't yeah. know that because it's usually associated with a negative connotation but anyway um i know what you mean don't it's worry. just like you, you don't have foresight like i do yeah. Uh, or hindsight, like I do. I mean, because hindsight means it already happened. I learned after the fact. Mm. And so, so the the thing that I try to do is like when people ask these types of questions, I like to try to train them to stop asking these types of questions. Okay. Ah, okay. Because the reason why is because the question, the answer to this question, might not actually help you. Yeah. Because if I go tell you, oh yeah, you should definitely go learn life drawing right? Because that seems like the right answer. And I'm sure Mm. many people will tell you that. And I think that is a good answer. The problem, though, is that you are now codependent on other people telling you how to do stuff. Mm. Because if I tell you that that's what you do, and then you just go do it, then you get stuck, you're not sure what to do next. So then what are you gonna have to do? You have to ask somebody else like, okay, well, now I've done this, what else do I do? Mm. So it's, it's a it's a process of where you're constantly not knowing because of your naiveness and you're afraid to do it because of your naiveness. You want to make sure that if you're going to do it, it's the right thing to do. And what I'm trying to say, you should change the philosophy. So the philosophy isn't why should I do it? Uh, Or or, I'm sorry, why uh, rather than like, um, yeah, why should I, or is this something worth doing? Right. Yeah. Mm. That's a better way of thinking about it. Like, Instead of saying, uh, is this something worth doing or is this something worth exploring? You should ask yourself why I should do it. Like instead of saying, okay, AJ, you know, is life drawing important and all this stuff and stuff like this, you know, like you would ask yeah. yourself, well, why should I learn life drawing? Yeah. Is it just because answer, people tell me or do I generally feel like it would help? Yeah. Me? And if the answer yeah. is, well, I should learn it because I'm a character artist and I need to learn mm-hmm. anatomy. Yeah. And the, then the answer is simple then, right? Of course yeah. you should do life drawing. Of course. Even if it's not available to you, the whole, I'll, I'll just watch a stream of it. I'll go on, watch video footage. Mm. I'll figure it out. But of course I need to learn it. Right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because instead of thinking about like having validation from somebody else, like validate it from your own perspective. Yeah. Right? True. And when you start to do that and you start to kind of have this philosophy of thinking, you start asking better questions more poignant mm. questions like questions like hey as i was studying life drawing i discovered i kept on doing this and then someone like me is like oh i know exactly what that feels like this is how i came over that right mm. see how how you're asking questions that are going to solve more specific problems rather than these like kind of large sweeping general questions of like should i even pursue this should i do that like those are more existential stuff that you should be solving on your on your terms not me. Yeah. You should decide whether you want to be a character designer. Okay, great. Then you should decide what you think is next for you to start to study, right? Mm-hmm. And then do it. You could be wrong. You could be right. But everything you do, you're going to learn. Because whenever people think that when they do something wrong, it takes away from experience, the, ro- the, pro- the reality is you're actually adding more experience. Because now you're learning not only what to do, you're learning what not to do. Yeah. And what, learning what not to do is why I paint so fucking fast. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had to do what not to do to experience it, to feel mm-hmm. it, and to understand on a greater scale why it's not important. That's why whenever I talk about how to do stuff, people are like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because I'm talking from the position of somebody else who fucked up. You know what I mean? Not somebody who's yeah, always absolutely. made good decisions, always like nailed it. Never. That's not true. Obviously, it's not true. Hmm. you know yeah. and so so i i think it's important to kind of change the philosophy and then when you start Good to point. change your philosophy of thinking um 
you just are more proactive. You're more active. You're mm. more, um, you're more of like a go getter solving your own problems rather than hoping other people will, you know? And I'm yeah. not trying to project that this is entirely who you are. I'm just saying that when you have these types of questions, uh, subconsciously, this is the kind of what's going on behind the scenes. And it's important mm. that you start to train yourself not to think this way and start to ask questions that will give you immediate answers. So whenever I run into problems, right? Like, no, yeah. I don't have, like, who's my mentor? Right? That's true. <laughs> and so think about that, right? Like, who's the AJ talking to? And so true, yeah. And so the reality is nobody. I don't really ask anybody. I just have these very specific questions. Like, mm-hmm. how do I draw anime faces is like the broader one. But then I'm like, okay, let's start with the eyes. How do I draw yeah. an anime eye? And then I just try to figure it out, you know? Because yeah. I'm like, if I want to get better at drawing anime characters, should I learn how to draw anime eyes? Like, what exercises should I do? Like, what can I, no, I just say, I want to draw anime characters. Let's start drawing the eyes. Like, I don't even think about whether it's a good idea or not. I don't mm. even think about whether it's the right place to start. I just start. And I just start doing it. And then I discover whether it's bad or good. Right. And then I somewhere see. along the lines, I'll start re- looking online. And then somebody will explain to you or explain to me, like, you should never start with the eyes because of this. And I'm like, oh, that makes so much more sense because this person <laughs> is explaining to me, but I've also experienced it. The context matches mm. instead of it just being abstract idea. And I just trust what they say. I'm like, no, like this person knows what they're talking about. I'm going to watch more of this person's videos. And then like this, they just probably will do a better job and then I'll find somebody else and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's a cascade effect. But if you're constantly looking for other people to give you that like, answer or rather like you're asking questions that are highly reliant on somebody else to determine your destiny of what you should be practicing Mm. like i think that's fundamentally flawed but like i said you gotta ask you gotta do stuff then realize you're wrong and then try something else so you now like with this insight i'm thinking you're probably reconsidering like a lot of questions you may have had yeah a lot of things right and that's really valuable trust me i've been there too I've been there where I asked all the wrong questions and I still do, you know, even to this Been there too. Yeah. (laughs) Everybody. I don't know any concept artist that just was like, nah, I never made a mistake. And I just became epic every day. It was great. (laughs) (laughs) Like I don't know anybody that's like this. And so don't ever feel like, oh man, I'm making so many mistakes. That just means you're practicing well. Okay. Okay. That's that's a good, uh, Good advice there. Definitely. And it's a good place to end to it. Think. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll see you guys on the week. I definitely <laughs> got to run now, like literally run. All right. Sorry. I'll see you guys on the, uh, over the weekend past the, uh, next week. Uh, you guys have a great one. Follow me on Instagram to follow the adventures that I'm going to have in New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me trying to be like, Hey, get, follow me on Instagram. Make <laughs> like it's like genuinely follow me there. I, like I've been using yeah. the stories more often. Anyway. Don't worry. I got it. <laughs> it's fine, man. See you guys. Uh, good luck. See you, AJ. Uh, work hard. Thanks, thanks, I'll, thanks again. I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, friends. See you. Yo. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.